the 6.5 is on the road here at Marvell Technology headquarters here in Silicon Valley. And Dan, we are here discussing a major announcement, and that is custom HBM. You know, it's funny, uh, five or six years ago, there was the debate on, do we even need any custom silicon, right? And now, particularly with the hyperscalers, it's pretty much all, not all custom silicon, but a lot. And whether it's uh, XPU, whether it's networking, whether it's HSMs, I mean, custom silicon uh, is all the rave. And now we have custom HBM, which is a subsystem inside of XPUs. Yeah, it's been a really exciting time, Pat. And, and you gave the histrionics pretty well there. There was a period of time where we thought, hey, can we do everything off the shelf, move really, really quickly? Now we're seeing this sort of transformation going on. And I think, you know, hyperscalers, are all seeing the potential to build silicon, whether that's to optimize their own software and their own workloads. And of course, they're seeing it as a value add to the that's customers right. that are building on their infrastructure. And so behind the scenes though, there are only a few companies in the world that are really enabling this technology. And of course, Marvell being one of them. And now we're seeing Marvell building with the ecosystem right. to bring more memory. And HBM has been another one of those buzzes, Pat, right alongside the XPU. And here we go. That's right. So let's dive in here. Uh, we have executives uh, from Marvell, SK Hynix, Samsung. Welcome, Indog, Sunny, and Will to the show. Mm -hmm. Great to have you on. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. All Thank right, you. Will. I want to start with you. So you heard our little preamble. I think uh, I imagine all three of you would agree about the enthusiasm <laughs> and excitement for uh, custom silicon. But also, we are seeing this kind of huge spike in demand for HBM. It's been one of the actual ways I've been tracking this AI demand, AI trade is, look, how much demand, how long are we sold out of HBM? Um, and it's certainly been a great indicator, but uh, why go custom? I mean, it seems like, oh, the solution's working, you know? Why is uh, Marvell partnering with SK and Samsung and, and, and others to, to bring this custom solution to market? Yeah, at a high level, uh, custom HBM, you know, we had a, a press release uh, today with some of our partners announcing this new breakthrough technology. And to your point, uh, today, all of the AI systems use standard HBM, stand, you know, and there's a standard interface, uh, but effectively at a high level, that interface is not scaling at the pace and the needs to support the hyperscaler customers. Uh, the interface can be improved and customized in a way that enables uh, more silicon uh, to go back to the XPU to enable more features and functions. They can reduce power and ultimately enable more capacity and benefit, uh, more capacity and bandwidth to support all their workloads. And it requires customization from companies like Marvell to go do that. And we're really uh, pleased to be working with our partners to go make that happen. Yeah, so let's start uh, uh, with Hynix. Uh, Sunny, um, we heard a little bit about what custom HBM is, but what actually gets customized? You know, I'm used to, having a, you know, a JETIC controller uh, in there that's kind of the interface. It's, it's kind of a big chip today on an HBM, but, but what, did, what is precisely getting customized and what are the advantages? When we get started with HBM, we start with IO, number of IO is 1,000. And next year, we are going right. to have the HBM4. Yeah. It's, I think, sixth generation it is. So we are going to have double number of the IO. It's 2K IO, we call that. Right. Uh, that is, okay, we extend the, you know, both with this to double. We make, we can make, you know, double bandwidth with that. But that means, it's, as Will mentioned, it's big button for our, you know, customer and even controller guys, age guys, like yeah. Marvel. So, in that perspective, you know, how to minimize the burden of that? That, I think the customized you know, the reason of the customization is starting from that point. And also, on top of that, in the future, if we look at the HBM right. development milestone in this industry, okay, JDEC defines it, you know, HBM, first generation to fifth, sixth, and seventh generation. Seventh generation becomes HBM four years. And after that, HBM five, it's time to define it. It's time to have the, you know, in the serial standard of the HBM5 in our hand, but it's not. Even right. we haven't get started yet. Yeah. So if you look at in you know, a long-term milestone or our development roadmap, we need something to fill it out. 
I would say that is custom HPM it is. Right. Yeah, it's a really exciting transformation. It sounds like there's a lot of work to be done. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Indung, you know, I sense the enthusiasm from all three of you, which which is great. I was very excited mm -hmm. when I saw the presentation initially about this. Kyle, what do you see? How does this how does this evolve? How quickly does this get adopted, um, you know, compared to the HBM that we're familiar with today? Well, as Will mentioned, at this point, uh, all of the ecosystem or customer are stick to the uh, standard solution. Timeline-wise, uh, you know, developing another product, uh, even combining a new level of technology when it comes to packaging and the logic as well as the memory, it will be another at least uh, one year or two moving forward. That's why Samsung, you know, made the head of a start in terms of, uh, you know, uh, adopting this custom solution uh, from the HPM4. And then uh, moving forward, the market evolution, uh, of course, the, the size of the opportunity that we're looking uh, is uh, tremendous. So uh, we strongly believe that, the, uh, you know, a uh, custom HBM uh, will be the majority portion of the market uh, towards like a 27, 28 time frame. And this kind of a close partnership with our industry partner should uh, be able to help uh, to solve a lot of uh, problems and uh, challenges moving forward because uh, customization, uh, you know, especially switching from commodity to custom solution is not a trivial thing. There has to be a lot of things need to be taken care of, uh, you know, industry partner collaboration, uh, as well as some of the very core technology development when it comes to, you know, logic, packaging, and the memory. So combined all those together, uh, we believe we have passed uh, to go to get there. Uh, uh, so we're very excited uh, to be part of uh, that kind of a uh, revolutionary path. Yeah, the rate of change is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I step back and I wonder how all of this actually works at the end of the day, but it does work and it does work really great. So, uh, Will, um, the data center market is uh, split between, let's say, hyperscalers uh, and the enterprise, and then we have the, the enterprise edge. Uh, curious, what kind of customers uh, does uh, custom uh, HBM start and what type of, of devices? And on the device side, right, we have GPUs and we have accelerators or XPUs as uh, Marvell calls them. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question, uh, question, Patrick. So at Marvell, I mean, we're estimating that the market for data center, the TAM for us, uh, in a few years, three or four years, is about $75 billion, right? right? Uh, so that for us is a huge opportunity. It's about, uh, like I think last year was a, a 21 billion and it's gonna grow to 75 over the next like four, four, four years or so. And out of that, uh, we estimate about uh, 40, 43 billion is for custom-based accelerators. These aren't actually GPUs. These are uh, custom solutions right. that we would, we would provide to the market. And alongside of that, what we see is this attach rate for custom HBM, right? So as all of our customers are moving to more intensity or a higher levels of customization inside their infrastructure, as you mentioned yeah. in the outset, this is what's pulling in uh, the need for custom HBM. And fundamentally, it's still solving the same problem. All of our customers see bottlenecks in their solutions as the, because they all need better and better performance over time, but they have a fixed uh, budget in terms typically of power and of space. And we're trying to solve those bottlenecks. So we're doing that with better and better silicon. And that, and in the end, they're actually at bottlenecks today on the HBM itself in terms of delivering performance for their AI workloads. Right. And custom HBM alleviates many of those bottlenecks in the interface as well as the density uh, so that they can have more performing, higher performing AI solutions, which they clearly are trying to build today. So we're in the forefront of that. And that's what is enabling this really fast and large growing market. And you brought that. together a few really important themes as well. I mean, one of them, and, and you know, our, we've been tracking the AI accelerated market. And, all the talk right now, not all the talk, because obviously some of the great 
uh, successes over the last year, you know, whether it's been, you know, the partnership with Amazon that you've made. Um, but the talk, big numbers, the big CapEx has been around the data center GPUs. But we actually have pinned the numbers for XPU to grow faster. Mm. And this is a combination of a few things, right? I mean, at least on our side as analysts, we believe that, you know, all the hyperscalers are going to want that benefit of vertical integration. They're going to want to control the destiny of their workloads. And of course, they're going to want to make more money on the servicing these. And building their own over time is certainly going to show higher ROI. So you, you hit on that as kind of why this TAM opportunity becomes so significant. And I think, you know, I think that's really an important point to make because at some point um, we will see the, the talk rotate and it will be more centric to XPU. It'll be more centric to XPU and then the custom solutions that go with it. Um, so I'd like to kind of tie this all together uh, in dog and then maybe Sonny, you could weigh in on this as well. Mm-hmm. When, you know, and you started to kind of allude to this, but when do we see this hit the market? Is it a year, is it two? Are you guys willing to make some prognostications? <laughs> um, and I, I heard you, Sonny, kind of ran through the roadmap a little bit, but from the time this hits the market, does the roadmap accelerate the way we're seeing other sort of generation to generation uh, developments accelerate? Or are we gonna try to kind of keep the pace uh, and manage the pace going forward? Well, customization is clearly a need and the direction from the market and our customers. However, as I mentioned, uh, it does need the time to develop. And we're talking about a, you know, uh, top-notch technology that combines state-of-the-art packaging, memory, and logic combined together. So uh, timeline-wise, uh, the prolification, prolification of the market size, one of the research firm you know, uh, projected that the $38 billion market by 2029. So the early adoption will be starting from a uh, year or two timeline and then you know a, a ramp up will be followed on through the 27 28 time frame that's how i would say in terms of the the growth path of the uh, adoption and the market or when it comes to custom hbn so sunny is that yeah. uh, does that sort of fit your timeline as well <laughs> uh yeah i i 100% agree with indong about it and uh, as i mentioned you know, HPM 4E is, you know, standard, you know, the approach is finalized. It's kind of consensus of the industry it is. So the, considering that, we are going to have standard HPM 4, you know, by 20, late 26. And customization will be started from 27. So usually in DRM industry, we, if we launch a new product, you know, it, it takes just one or two years to be mainstream of the entire, you know, the market. So that means around 29 time frame, as Indong mentioned, it's gonna be, you know, mainstream product, mainstream, you know, product in the HBM market. I'm pretty sure about it. Yeah. Because part, on top of that, as I mentioned, we don't have DDR5, you know, HBM5 definition at the moment. Yeah. So what else could be solution around that time frame? I would say is custom HBM. Yeah, that's really uh, exciting, Pat. You think about yeah. just the last two years, how much has happened in this space. Right. We're going out to 2029. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's going to be incredible to watch everything from model development to agent, agentic AI really hitting utilization, enterprise value, TCOs and measurement. And one thing, by the way, you know, I, I should have mentioned, I think you guys would all agree, and you kind of alluded to this a little bit, Will, when you were talking, but the power and the, the challenges, we've heard some things yes. from Marvell, we've heard some mm-hmm. things across the industry uh, from you know all of your firms, but the amount of power that's gonna be required to build these out and, and why custom can solve a lot of those, you know, solve some of those problems, obviously by improving the amount of processing, lowering the uh, amount of power being used more efficient. These are really important themes when you start, because it's not just about one XPU, with exactly. it's the stacking of these things, it's hundreds and thousands and mm-hmm. tens of thousands, mm-hmm. And as that builds out, every little bit of efficiency that can be gained yeah. really, really matters. So gentlemen, Indung, Will, Sonny, thank you so much for sitting down with the 6.5 here. Uh, really great. Congratulations on the partnership. We look forward to tracking and watching and seeing over the next couple of years how this comes to fruition. Thanks thank you so us. much. Thank you, Daniel and Petri. Thanks. And thank all of you so much for tuning in to the 6.5. We're here on the road at Marvell Technologies headquarters. 
we just unveiled a really exciting new partnership. The future of AI XPUs is going to be tied so closely to memory, and you heard some very interesting innovation here today. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our content here on The 6.5. We appreciate you being part of our community. We got to go for now. We'll see you all later.